All right. Cool. So let's go ahead and start over with the agenda. So we'll talk about finding internships. We'll talk about job descriptions. We'll talk about, inter or sorry, resume basics. We'll talk about um, critiquing some resume examples. We'll go over do's and don'ts of resumes. We'll talk about resume tips. Um, I wanted to cover asking for letters of recommendation. And then there will be time for just open office hours and I can answer your questions and um, help you one-on-one -on -one with resume um, building. Cool, so let's start first about finding internships. And if you guys have questions, feel free to just shout it out or put it in the chat. So um, finding internships. So you'll want to reach out to your network. Um, so that includes asking your family, your family friends, your friends of friends, and your professors. So you'll just want to cast a wide network and just ask anybody. Um, you'll never know who has a lead. So I just encourage you to let everyone know that you're looking for a, a particular kind of internship. And I promise you that you'll get leads. Um, I advise using LinkedIn um, and if you don't have a profile for LinkedIn, I encourage you to make one today. So make sure to follow companies and organizations you'd be interested in working at so that the news and announcements show up in your LinkedIn feed. Um, and then I would encourage you to check out the STEM Center internship databases. So we have one at Skyline College and you would just go to our um, STEM Center webpage. Um, and then um, not Canada College, but Kenyatta. So Kenyatta College has a very um, good internship database as well on their STEM Center webpage. Um, and then another tip is you can just go to the company website. So if you're interested in a particular company or organization, you can just go to their jobs webpage um, and then you can just search for open roles or internships there. Um, and then lastly, we uh, created an internships and scholarships um, channel on Discord. We actually just created it yesterday. So Discord is another um, resource. Do I have any questions so far? No? Okay. So let's talk about job descriptions. So you'll want to read through the job description or internship description multiple times and make sure you understand it thoroughly. You'll want to copy and paste the job description into a Word doc. This is what I always do when I'm applying for a job. Um, and then I would recommend highlighting um, the job description um, like this. So you'll highlight hard skills in green, soft skills in yellow, knowledge in red. Um, and then another helpful tip, um, it's helpful to have the job description saved because employers will most likely take it down when you start interviews. So you can use the job description to help you prepare for your interview if you make it to the interview round. So that's why I recommend copying and pasting the job description into a Word doc. Um, and then I also recommend using resume scanning tools um, to help tailor your resume. Um, so you can use jobscan.co um, and the more effectively you can tailor your resume to a job um, description, the better your chances are of getting an interview. Um, optimizing keywords and hard skills in a resume helps it stand out in an applicant tracking system or ATS. Um, so when I was in tech recruiting, we wouldn't even look at resumes that didn't have keywords. And so in order to get through an applicant tracking system, you want to make sure to have those keywords that are in the job description. So here's just a sample of um, a job description. And I, this is actually the job I did at Quizlet and I kept it on my computer for all these years. <laughs> but um, you'll notice that I highlighted hard skills in green. So um, things like scheduling travel, that I had experience doing that, coordinating candidate process. Soft skills are um, attributes, so caring about the field or um, being warm and, and um, welcoming when you greet guests. Those are um, at, uh, personal attributes. And then red is knowledge. So you have experience or knowledge, for example, doing event planning, like I highlighted here. Let me see if I have any questions so far. I don't see any, so I'm gonna go ahead. And we can do questions at the end as well, if you wanna hold your questions till the end. Do you guys know Clippy? From Microsoft. Maybe you don't remember Clippy, but that's Clippy. Um, so 
here are some useful things to remember. So no one ever reads resumes for fun. I mean, some weird people like me read them for fun, but most people are trying to get a problem solved when they're looking at resumes. resumes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're looking to solve a problem, right? Or not even solve a problem, but fill a vacancy in their company. So at some level, all employers are hired to do the same job. Problem solution and problem avoidance within a spe specific area of expertise. Um, resumes are always read with job titles in mind and resumes are always read with a job description in mind. All right, so let's talk about the resume sections. These are the major sections of your resume. So you'll wanna include your education and relevant coursework, your professional experience, leadership and community service, projects, personal projects, skills, and then make sure to include highlights, like if you're an NC, or sorry, NSF STEM scholar, or if you're an engineering tech scholar or biology chemistry scholar, you should include that. And then your interests, like even outside of work, um, make sure that it's something like, you know, like a um, desirable interest, if that makes sense. Um, if you, I don't know, are really good at um, drawing or music, play an instrument. And so if, uh, since a lot of you are writing your first resume, um, you might find that you don't have a lot of professional experience yet. And that's okay, because what you'll do is you'll really lean on your volunteer experience, your school experience, so if you're in a club, um, and your coursework. So no need to worry if you don't have a lot of job experience yet. So here is the education portion, portion. So you'll wanna make sure to include your college info, your intended major, your expect, expected transfer. Um, and then this is important, you'll include your GPA, but if it's above 3.5, um, and then no need to include your high school info. Um, and then you can go ahead and take a look at this sample education portion. Um, so they put their expected transfer, GPA, and the different clubs they're involved with at Skyline. And they put that they're a physics candidate. Education and relevant coursework. So here is where um, this is a mechanical engineering student and they put um, the courses that they've taken. And then you'll notice they also put the courses that they plan on taking. So in parentheses, they put planned. So for professional experience or any jobs that you're doing, um, make sure to use active verbs, use consistent tenses. So if you're saying things in the past tense, make sure it's all in the past tense. If you're currently working there, use the current tense. Use good grammar. Um, emphasize leadership aspects of the job where you showed leadership skills. Um, make it readable, pay attention to formatting. Um, and then make sure to avoid um, too much unnecessary detail and make sure not to undersell yourself by using words like basic, elementary. Um, be proud of your skill set and, um, and uh, what you've achieved. So here's an example of some active verbs that you can use in a resume. So here are some people-centric ones. Um, arranged, managed, supervised. I like this one, mediated some ideas and information related, so marketed, monitored, clerical, so implemented, operated, management, analyzed, increased is a good one. Um, you can talk about how you increased a bottom line or something. Technical, so assembled, calculated, designed, programmed. You get the idea. So now we're gonna look at some work experience examples. So here's before editing. And if you guys can just kind of shout out, like, what do you see, what do you think could be improved here? The format. Good format. Anything else? Is there anything in the chat? I'm having trouble viewing the chat, so I'll need you guys to shout out if you have any other ideas. Oh, here, chat. Not well summarized, too long. Okay, not well categorized, cool. 
Thank you guys. So yeah, that's correct. Basically, it's kind of muddy and it's not simple to read. And as we said before, um, people don't usually read resumes for fun. So the more we can make it easy to read, the better. And ways to make it easier to read is by including bullet points. And then you'll notice that an action verb always um, starts off the sentence. So you'll see here after editing, managed warehouse operations, resolved customer support issues, maintained inventory supplies, coordinated the scheduling of X amount of employees. So if you coordinated the scheduling of 20 employees, that's really impressive. And so I think any time that you can put a number, um, I don't know, increase sales by 60% or something, but you get the idea. Using numbers can really help um, paint the picture. You do? Solid example. I heard a question. Oh. <laughs> You're good? Okay. So here's another, here's another one here. So what do you guys think could be improved here? Anybody? You can put it in the chat too. I figured out how to view the chat. It's kind of a harder one. So this is somebody who is, um, looks like they worked at a coffee shop. Floor manager was in charge of front of house operations, well scheduled. Barista made a variety of espresso beverages with large emphasis on latte art. Oh, I see some in the chat. Let's see what you guys say. Maybe can you sub bullet points? Yeah, that's a good point. So this one kind of looks pretty good, right? Um, but there are some ways that it can be improved and I'll show you. So one idea would be the formatting. Um, and then we have um, the bullet points. Um, basically it starts off again with an action verb. Supervised front of house and operations, delegated tasks to a team of five to eight employees. So again, using a solid number. Um, which helps paint the picture better of what this, in, this person achieved. Um, addressed customer service issues. I like this verb, spearheaded the recruitment, interviewing, and training process for new employees. And then maintain store inventory daily. Um, so hopefully you guys can see how, um, how this um, after editing is a little bit better and paints a better picture. I have a quick question about that one. Yeah, go for it how are you supposed to eliminate like all the white space if you're leaving those boxes next to on the left open i'm let me see if i can go back oops sorry one sec alt and left arrow oops sorry ryan one sec So, so you were wondering about this white space on the left? Yeah. Like, uh -huh. aren't you supposed to like eliminate all the white space or something? I mean. And having a big open block there. Right. Especially with multiple of those, like. Yeah, I mean, I would say this is not a bad format if it's someone with not much work experience and you're trying to make a page, um, res like a full page resume. I think that this is a fine format, but you're right. If it's somebody with more work experience and more stuff to include, um, my suggestion, um, if you guys can see my cursor here, would be to put the work experience and the dates up above. Or you could put, actually, you could move the formatting, the bullets, to, to, to the left. Does that make sense, Ryan? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Cool. So let's just talk a little more about the skills section. So if you have some hard skills, like, for example, 
this is a person who's a computer science uh, major. They would want to include um, their software development skills and the computer software that you know. Um, even if you're not um, in STEM, make sure you know any of the following computer software to include that, even if it's MS Word or Excel or PowerPoint. All of that, that stuff matters. Um, and then here are some other skills and qualification ideas. Um, Okay, and then here's a, a sample of leadership experience and volunteer experience. So this is someone who um, has participated in various clubs at Skyline. So um, they included that they did um, model design competition um, with the engineering and robotics club. Um, there's also um, this project here with the bits and bytes club. They're the secretary of Bits and Bytes Club. So any clubs that you're involved with, you make sure to include that in your resume, especially if you don't have much work experience to uh, lean on. All right. So I'd like to end this portion with some tips. Um, so use job descriptions to give you ideas of how to describe your job duties. And I showed you how to um, read and highlight the skill sets and the job descriptions. Use a great example of a resume and aim to make yours better than it. I really like that um, tip. Have more than one person look at your resume. So have your parents, your friends, have me look at your resume. The, the more eyes you can get on your resume, the better. Keep a master resume. So this is actually a tip for someone who has a lot of job experience in different fields. Um, so for those of you that this, um, refers to, um, you would wanna keep a master resume on file. And I do this, I keep my master resume on my desktop with every job I've ever had since high school. And then you can pool relevant jobs and experience to kind of Frankenstein or create another resume that is tailor fit to the job you are currently applying for. Um, and then if you don't have a lot of work experience, draw um, from your educational and volunteer experience in your classes. Um, and lastly, formatting matters. So you can use Canva, not to be confused with Canvas, but Canva, it's a um, website where you can um, create posters and resume templates. Um, and Microsoft Word even has some cool resume templates. Um, and then I quickly wanted to talk about asking for letters of recommendation um, because I received feedback from professors that this is something really important that they wanted me to tell you guys about. Um, oh, I see in the chat. I sometimes use slides, text boxes, work. Okay, maybe use several ones. So basically, um, it will come to a time that you'll need letters of rec and whether that's when you're getting ready to transfer or um, even for some internships you're thinking of applying for, they might ask for letters of recommendation. So I just wanted to go over the etiquette for that. Um, so people you can reach out to for a letter of rec, you can ask your professors, um, work or volunteer supervisors are great. You could even ask colleagues and coworkers, although that's not ideal. Um, and be certain that they know your work ethic and that they will uh, provide a positive recommendation. I know that seems common sense, but you just want to double check that this will be a great um, letter of rec for you. Um, and then I highlighted this next bullet point because it's super important and you guys are probably going to hear me tell you this time and time again. Um, but it's important to start building rapport with faculty now, even if you haven't already. Attending office hours is a great way to get to know your professors. So if you guys haven't started going to office hours and reaching out to faculty, I highly recommend that you do that now. Um, not to sound like a broken record, but they're really there to help you. And you'll wanna make sure also when it comes time that you'll need a letter of rec, they can help support you with that and they'll have stuff to talk about. You'll, you'll wanna make sure to stand out to your professors. So don't be shy, go to office hours. Um, and I am going to get off my soapbox there now. Um, and then lastly, make sure to give your um, reference um, plenty of time before the letter is due. Give them detailed instructions on how to submit the letter. 
Um, and then provide them, you could provide them with a job description um, as an attachment um, with talking points about like what things they could bring up that you've done. Um, you could send them your resume as an attachment and even a sample letter of rec. Sometimes I'll, if somebody's really busy, I'll send them just like a sample letter that they can kind of Frankenstein and then um, use that to provide me with a letter of rec. Um, So that's the end of the presentation. Um, I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, and again, if you want one-on-one -on -one resume support, I am here for you. You can email me, um, here's my email, or um, you can book time directly via my Calendly page. So um, if you wanted to take note of that link.